Hello everybody, welcome back to another riveting episode of The Real BBC. Today we'll be discussing the third book of Moshi. Sorry, I'm car keys today. And a blanket. We'll be discussing the third book of Moshi, numbers one and one. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Got the Arctic blast coming through the Midwest right now. Got my house set at 63 degrees, which is either rather comfortable. Like I said I don't have a basement in my house, I just have like a loft area. And so the, the loft area is typically I don't know, six degrees hotter than whenever I set my thermostat at. So in the summer, I spent more time in the, the living room area, and in the winter, more time in the loft area. Still not a budget money. Don't know how much it's going to cost the gas bill. Went up almost three times since the last one for December. So got my blanket here, trying to stay snug. But diving in, just giving you a, a read through of the Book of Moshe, the Holy Bible, our first history book or story, and giving you any commentary historical insights, or anything I can come up with. Moses to number Israel. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation on the first day of the second month in the second year, after they, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye the sum of the congregation. So if this is, this is the second year after being freed from Egypt, so then Exodus and, and uh, whatever, Leviticus couldn't have been more than a year, year and a half. Time. Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel after their families, by their house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles. From twenty years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. So we need a, we need a defense team. Heads of the tribes of Israel. And with you there shall be a man of every tribe, every one head of the house of his fathers. And these are the names of the men that shall stand with you. The tribe of Reuben, Elizur, the son of Shudur, of Simeon, Shelemiel, the son of Zer, Zerishadi, and of Judah, Nashon, the son of Ammonite. And then they list a bunch of names. I'm, I'm going to butcher all of the pronunciations. The taking of the census. And Moses and Aaron took these men, which are expressed by their names. They assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of their names, from 20 years old and upward, by their poles. So interesting, 20 years old for the draft as opposed to 18 or younger for recent American history. As the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai, the tribe of Reuben, and the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son, and their generations after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of, of the names, by their poles, every male from, male from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even the tribe of Reuben, were forty and six thousand and five hundred. So forty six thousand five hundred, not not too big. I just don't know the relative populations of the other groups in the area at the time. The tribe of Simeon. Of the children of Simeon, by their generations and after their families, by the house of their fathers that were numbered to them, according to their names, by their poles, every male from the twenty years old and upward, all that were there to go forth to war. Those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Simeon, were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. So we're up to about, I don't know, a hundred thousand people of, of fightable men, the tribe of Gad. Okay, so they just repeat. The same thing, so I'm just going to read the total numbers because there's a lot of these. Those that were number of the tribe of, of, of Gad were 45,650, so about 150,000. The tribe of Judah, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Judah, were three score and 14,600. Don't know what three score is, I don't know that's 100,000, 300,000, and 14,000, so that'd be a big, Judah's laying some pipe. So I was call, I'm assuming three scores is 300,000. So we'll call that 500,000 people. The tribe of Issachar, of the children of Issachar, blah, blah, blah. Those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Issachar, were 50 and 4,400. So now we're at 550 ish, just super ballpark. Came right with a highlighter. Tribe of Zubulun, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Zubulun, were 50 and 7,400. 600k. The tribe of Joseph, Ephraim, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Ephraim, were 40,500. 640. The tribes of Joseph, Manasseh, 
Those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Manasseh, were thirty and two thousand. Joseph of Manasseh is not laying too much pipe. So we'll round that up. We'll call that 690,000. 690, nice. Tribes of Benjamin, those were a number of them, even of the tribe of Benjamin, were 30 and 5,000 and 400. So Benjamin's laying even less pipe. So 720,000. Tribe of Dan, of the children of Dan, by their generations, after their families, by the half, blah, blah, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Dan, were three score, 2,700. Again, assuming three score is 300,000, obviously my, my, my dude Dan was laying pipe. Three score, 2,700. I think, I think that is, so we'll call that seven, we'll call that a million people? Again, it could be way off if three score is like less than, than I'm saying 300,000. The tribe of Asher. Those that were numbered of them, even in the tribe of Asher, were 40 and 1,500. So we'll just a 1.05 mil. The tribe of Naphtali, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Naphtali, were 50 and 3,400. So 1.1 mil, if three score is correct, if three score is a minuscule number, that would take away about 600,000 people. So of fightable, of people eligible to be drafted, anywhere from 500,000-ish people to about 1.1 million. In the tribe, in the, in the, in the Jewish, in the, the Hebrew people at this time, the census completed. Again, drop a comment if three score is three hundred thousand, or if it's some, something I'm missing. These are the census completed. These are those that were numbered, which Moses and Aaron numbered, and the princes of Israel, being twelve men, each one of those the house of his fathers. So were all those that were numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers, from twenty years old and upward all that were able to go forth to war in Israel. Even all they that were numbered were 600,000 and 3,000 and 550. So I didn't have to count all that. Even all they that were numbered were 600,000. So I was right, three scores got to be wrong. And 3,000, 600,000 and 3,000 and 550. So yeah, I didn't need to count. That was cool. <laughs> Levites are not numbered. All those Levites. Why are we counting the Simeons, not the Levites? They were both Levi and Simeon, and Simeon were in the same group, like the same, the same naughty list. But the Levites after the tribe of their fathers were not numbered among them. So maybe the Levites aren't from Levi. But the Lord had spoken unto Moses, saying, Only thou sh shalt not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel. So I'm not sure why, we, we don't, I'm not sure why I don't like Levi. Because I thought Simeon was in the same boat as Levi. Levites assignment, but thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, and over all the things belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. So maybe because the Levites are catching some bodies, they're going to stay back and protect, they're going to be the muscle around the, the holy grounds. And when the tabernacle setteth forward, the Levites shall take it down, and when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And the children of Israel shall pitch their tents, every man by his own camp, and every man by his own standard, throughout their host. But the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle of testimony, that there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel. And the Levites shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of testimony. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did they, captains of tribes named. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house, far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. Tribes on the east side of the camp, and on the east side toward the rising of the sun, shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies. And Nashon the son of Aminadab shall be captain of the children of Judah. And his hosts, those that were numbered of them, were three score and four, fourteen thousand and six hundred. And those that do pitch next unto him shall be the tribe of Issachar, and Neth, Neth, Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, shall be captain of the children of Issachar. And the host and those that were numbered thereof were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. Then the tribe of Zebulon, and Elob, the son of Helon, shall be captain of the children of Zebulon. Zebulun. And his host and those that were numbered thereof were fifty and seven thousand. All that were numbered in the camp of Judah were a hundred thousand and fourscore 
thousand, and six thousand, and four hundred throughout their armies. These shall first set forth. Tribes on the south side of the camp. On the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben according to their armies. The captain, so again we're just literally just listing who's, who's, who's stationed where for military services. And so again, uh, Israel present day you have to serve in the army. So again we're just going to skip this stuff. The tribe in the center of the camp, the Levites protecting the center. They're literally, they're literally just naming the, the, the armies, the, the captains. The tribes on the north side, big homies Dan holding down the north side. North side. Yeah, 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 three score, end of the host. I'm just honestly trying to get a, a, an accurate number about how many people this is. Because this three score, four score shit throws me. And when it says this, this side, when it says the camp on the south side has, you know, a hundred some thousand people, then, then maybe it is close to a million. I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about three score, four score anymore. And dun, 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 dun. Okay, so now we're picking up the sons of Aaron. These are all also are the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that the Lord spake with Moses in Mount Sinai. And these are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests which were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered a strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. And they had no children. And Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron and their father. So again, now we're re reviewing Nadab and Abihu's death before the Lord in the in the in the church or the tabernacle or the synagogue or whatever they just wherever they're calling it at these times. But so it's just redundancy. I think it's just a collection of multiple people from the Jewish Hebrew tradition writing about the same history from the different tribes. So I don't, know, I don't know why we keep repeating the same stuff like that. The Levites to serve in the tabernacle, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near and present them before Aaron and the priest that they may minister unto him, and they shall keep his charge, and the charge of the whole congregation before the tabernacle of the congregation, to do the service of the tabernacle. And they shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the charge of the children of Israel, to do the service of the tabernacle. And thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons, they are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on their priest's office, and a stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. So the Levites just aren't being counted amongst the, the, the perimeter forces. The Levites set apart by God. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel, instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel. Therefore the Levites shall be mine, because all the firstborn are mine. For on that day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn of Israel. Both man and beast, mine shall they be, I am the Lord. It's like cut all those Egyptian bodies, now 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 the Israel bodies are mine too. Moses numbered the Levites. So why what what the fuck are we doing here, guys? Now the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Number the children of Levi, after the house of their fathers, by their families, every male from a month old and upward shall thou number them. And Moses numbered them according to the word of the Lord, as he was commanded. Descendants of Levi. And these were the sons of Levi by their names, Gershon, and Kohath, and Merari. And these are the names of the sons of Gershon of their families, Libni, and Shemai, and the sons of Kohath by their families, Amram, and Isahar, Hebron, and Uziel. And the sons of Merari by their families, Mahli, Mushi. These are the families of the Levites according to the house of their fathers. The duties of Gershon's family. Of Gershon was the family of the Le Lib Libnites and the family of the Shemites, these are the families of the Gershonites. Those that were numbered of them, according to them, 7,500. 7, now we're again listing names and, and populations, so we're going to skip through this pretty quick. The charge of the Gershon in the tabernacle of the congregation shall be the tabernacle and the tent, and covering thereof, and hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the hangings of the court and the curtain for the door of the court, which is by the tabernacle and by the altar round about, and the cords of it for all the service thereof. The duties of Kohath's family. And so they just list the numbers again. They shall, the families of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle southward. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of the Kohathites shall be Ilwasaphon. And is listing duties and the duties of Merari's family. I mean, we're gonna get a number, what they're doing. They're just protecting the, the, the uh, tabernacle. 
just different parts of it. Moses, is, Moses and Aaron's encampment. But those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons, keeping charge of the sanctuary for the charge of the children of Israel. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. The number of male Levites. And all the numbered of the Levites, which Moses and Aaron numbered at the commandment of the Lord throughout their families, all the males from a month old and upward, were twenty and two thousand. The num number of male firstborn. Skipping through, skipping through. And all the firstborn males by the number of names from a month old and upward. And those that were numbered of them were twenty and two thousand and two hundred and three score and thirteen. So three scores being this pretty minor, pretty minor. I don't know what magnitude that is. Redemption of the firstborn. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle. And the Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. For those that are not are to be redeemed of the two hundred and three score, and thirteen of the firstborn of the children of Israel, which are more than the Levites. Thou shalt even take five shekels apiece by the pole. After the shekel of the sanctuary shalt thou take them. The shekel is twenty garahs. So I don't know what a garah is. And thou shalt give the money where, where, wherewith the odd number of them is to be redeemed unto Aaron and his sons. And Moses took the redemption money of them that were over and above them that were redeemed by the Levites of the firstborn of the children of Israel took he the money. A thousand three hundred and three score and five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. And Moses gave the money of them that were redeemed unto Aaron and to his sons according to the word of the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. The sons of Kohath, and the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi, after their families by their houses and their fathers. From thirty years old and upward, even until fifty years old, all that enter into his host to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. This shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation about the most holy things. Duties of Aaron and his sons. When the camp settle, settleth forward, Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering of ale and cover the ark of testimony with it, and shall put thereon the covering of badger's skin, and shall spread over it a cloth of woolly blue, holy of blue, and shall put in the staves thereof, and upon the table of shoe bread, again, I, keep, I need that shoe bread and shit and wood, they shall spread a cloth of blue, and put thereon the dishes, and the spoons, and the bowls, and covers to cover withal, and the continual bread shall be thereon, and they shall spread upon the, them a cloth of scarlet, and cover the same with a covering of badger's skin, and shall put it in the staves thereof. Okay, and now we're doing way too much formality for me to care. Duties of the sons of Kohath. And when Aaron and his sons have made an end of covering the sanctuary, and all the vessels of the sanctuary, as the camp is to set forward, after that the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it, but they shall not touch any holy thing, lest they die. These things are the burden of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation. Eleazar's duty, and to the office of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest pertaineth the oil for the light, and the sweet incense, and the daily meat offering, and the, the anointing oil, and the oversight of all the tabernacle of all that therein is, in the sanctuary, and in the vessel thereof. Kothathites set apart for service. The Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Cut ye not off the tribe of the families of Kohathites from among the Levites, but thus do unto them that they may live and not die when they approach unto the most holy things. Aaron and his sons shall go in and appoint them every one to his service and to his burden, but they shall not go in to see when the holy things are covered, lest they die. Moses to number the sons of Gershon. And the sons and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Gershon throughout the houses of their fathers by their families, from thirty years old and upward. Until fifty years old shalt thou number them, all that enter into perform the service to do a work in the tabernacle of congregation. So interesting, similar type of age cutoffs, right? We have eighteen for like an adult. It seems to be like twenties when they start counting for military service. And like we can't, you can't be a, a representative until twenty-five or a congressperson or president until thirty-five. I think Congress might be thirty and presidential is dead at thirty-five. The representative is twenty-five, so it's about the same ages, twenty to thirties, when people are like, yeah, you can be a mature adult. Unless you were born too mature, and then you get tortured for 22 years, legitimately. So that's fun. Duties of the sons of Gershon. This is the service of the families of the Gershonites, to serve and for burdens. And they shall bear the curtains of the tabernacle, and the tabernacle of the congregation is covering and the covering of the badger skin that is above upon it. 
and the hanging up for the door of the tabernacle of the congregations. Skipping through this stuff. Moses and over the sons of Merari, from 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, thou shalt number them, every one that entereth the service, and do the work of the tabernacle of congregation. Duties of the sons of Merari, just more, more random stuff. Numbering the, of the sons of Kohath, and Moses and Aaron, and the chief of the congregation, number the sons of the Kohathites, and their families, and after the house of their fathers. How many are there? And those that were numbered between 30 and 50, numbered of them by their families, were 2,750. So I'm not, not too worried about 2,700 people over here. Numbering of the sons of Gershon. I'm going to pass over that. And this is super petulant. I just wanted an overall number of like their military strength. Not, not 2,700 sol soldiers over here changing the tabernacle's cloth. So, numbering the sons of Merari, skipping that, the total number of Levites. All those that were numbered of the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron and the chief of Israel numbered, all their families, and those of, after the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, everyone that came to do the service of the ministry, and the service of the burden in the tabernacle of the congregation, even those that were numbered of them, were eight thousand and five hundred and four score. We don't have any Levites. The command to cleanse the camps. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they put out of the camp every leper, and every one that hath an issue, and whosoever is defiled by the dead. Defiled by the dead, is cursed, I guess. Both male and female shall ye put out, without the camp shall ye put them, that they defile not their camps in the midst whereof I dwell. And the children of Israel did so, and put them out without the camp, as the Lord spake unto Moses, so did the children of of Israel. So again, why are we cleansing the camps? We just had a we just had a long list of rules about how long we're going to quarantine for. So what's what is, what's the difference going on here? I think different authors all interpreting the same history amongst you know. And that was that was the of the people that were between twenty and fifty for the the just the army in general said about six hundred thousand. So I still don't have a great idea. But then they said there were six hundred thousand when they left um, when they left Egypt. So again, they'd get, but that's it's been a while since Egypt. Well, it it's only been two years since Egypt. So I'm just not exactly sure if this is just altering accounts of history or just inconsistency. But we just we just had rules about cleansing camps and, and, and bodily functions and stuff. So I don't know if this is I don't know why this is different. Laws regarding restitution. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, when a man or woman shall commit any sin that men commit, to do a trespass against the Lord, and that person be guilty. Then they shall confess their sin, which they have done, and he shall recompense his trespass with the tri principle thereof, and add unto it a fifth year part thereof, and give it unto him against whom he hath trespassed. But if a man have, have no kinsman to recompense the trespass unto, let the trespass be recompensed unto the Lord, even to the priest, beside the realm of atonement, whereby an atonement shall be made for him. Again, they're just calling the Lord perfect judgment. And every offering of the holy things of the children of Israel, which they bring unto the priest, shall be his. And every man's hallowed things shall be his, sacred hallowed. Whatsoever any man giveth the priest, it shall be his. Law regarding jealousy. But I am a jealous God. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against them, and a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept closed, and she be defiled, and there be no witness against her, neither she be taken with the manner. Can't prove cheating, then can't be taken with the manner. And the spirit of jealousy came upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she not be defiled. Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her, a tenth part of an ephah of barley meal, and he shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon, for it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, sensorial, bringing iniquity up to remembrance. Uh, so again, we had now we have a distinct law for jealousy, but it just, it just, it just strikes me as extremely redundant. It seems like different writers interpreting the same historical tradition. The test of bitter water. And the priest shall bring her near, and set her before the Lord. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and all of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put into the water. So again, like last, like the last whatever, one of the previous readings, 
if you slept with the wrong person, you would surely be put to death. So it's just like, this is just a law regarding jealousy. So maybe if you're not absolutely certain of cheating, it does say that. Not really sure. I'm thinking it's different authors. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord, because the timing's not too long. So if this is really two and a half years between getting out of Egypt and whatever the last verse was saying, two and a half years, that's, that certainly could be the same person. It just seems to be redundant. And uncover the woman's head, and put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealous the offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. And the priest shall charge her by an oath, and say unto the woman, if no man have lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another, instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causes the curse. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, and if thou be defiled, and some man have lain with thee beside thine husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among the people. When the Lord doth make the, thy thigh to rot, and thy belly to swell, and this water that causeth the curse shall go into the bowels, to make thy belly to swell, and thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, say, Amen, Amen. And the priest shall write these curses in a book, and he shall blot them out with a bitter water. So we're doing witchcraft here in the Old Testament. That's good. And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water with, that causeth the curse, and the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. So again, we're doing witchcraft now before we just had social isolations for a while, which is pretty biologically consistent. So I don't know what is going on. Why well, keep doing the same shit again? Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand, and shall wave the offering before the Lord, and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take an handful of offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar, and afterwards shall cause the woman to drink the water. And when he hath made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass, that if she be defiled, and have done trespass against her husband, then the water that causes the curse shall enter her, and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, and her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. And if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free, and shall conceive seed. This is the law of jealousies. When a wife goeth aside to another instead of her husband, and is defiled, or when the spirit of jealousy cometh upon him, and he be jealous over his wife, and shall set the woman before the Lord, and the priest shall execute upon all, her all this a law. Then shall the man be guiltless from iniquity, and this woman shall bear her iniquity. Laws regarding a Nazarite. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall have drink no vinegar. So again, strong drink, again, seems that like we have distilled spirits in the Old Testament, as opposed from wine, fermented beers and wines, strong drink, almost certainly distilled alcohols. And shall drink no vinegar of wine, or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat most moist grapes dried. So clearly liquor, straight up said there. So again, I still, historically, I don't know when fermented, when, when distilled alcohol came into play. All the days of his separation shall eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come up upon his head, until the days be fulfilled, in which he separateth himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy, and shall let the locks of their hair of his head grow. All the days that he separateth himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. <laughs> He's not going to come over cross bodies? And around. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother, for his brother or for his sister when they die, because they consecration because the consecration of his God is upon his head. All the days of his separation he is holy unto the Lord. So take it to your grave. Our, we're going to take our traditions to the grave with us. If any man die very suddenly by him, and he hath defiled the head of his consecration, he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall he shave it. And on the eighth day he shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons to the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, the other for a burnt offering, and to make an atonement for him, for that he sinned by the dead, and shall hollow his head that same day. So he can't desecrate dead bodies. He shall consecrate unto the Lord the days of his separation, and shall bring a lamb of the first year for a trespass offering. 
but the days that were before shall be lost because his separation was defiled. Days of separation fulfilled. And this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall offer his offering unto the Lord, one of the lamb of the first year without blemish for a burnt offering, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish for a sin offering, and one ram without blemish for a peace offering. And, the basket of un and a basket of unleavened bread, cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, and wafers of unleavened bread be anointed with oil, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings. And the priest shall bring them before the Lord, and shall offer his sin offering and his burnt offering. And he shall offer the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, which the basket of unleavened bread, the priest shall offer his, also his meat offering and his drink offering. And the Nazarite shall shave the head of the separation of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, shall take the hair of the head of his separation and put it in the fire, which is under the sacrifice of peace offerings. A bunch of burning hair doesn't smell too appealing, sound too appealing. And the priest shall take the sodden, sodden shoulder of the ram and one unleavened cake out of the basket and one unleavened wafer and shall put them upon the hands of the Nazarite after the hair of his separation is shaven. And the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. This is holy for the priest and the wave breast and heavy sho heave shoulder. And after that, the Nazarite may drink wine. Then you may turn up after you do the rituals. Then you can join the club. Don't know the relationship of the, of the Nazarites to the 12 tribes of Israel. This is the law of the Nazarite who hath vowed and, and of his offering unto the Lord for his separation. Besides that, his hand shall get according to the vow which he vowed so he must do after the law of his separation. So maybe just a conversion rules. Nazareth wants to be a join the club. Blessings on the children of Israel. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise yea shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee, and the great and gracious unto thee. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Offerings by the tribal princes. And it came to pass on the day that Moses had fully set up the tabernacle, had anointed it, and sanctified it, and all the instruments thereof, both the altar and all the vessels thereof, and had anointed them and sanctified them, that the princes of Israel, heads of the houses of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes, and were over them, that were numbered, offered. And they brought their offering before the Lord, six covered wagons and twelve oxen, a wagon for the, for two of the princes and for each one an ox, and they brought them before the tabernacle. Offerings given to Levites. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take it of them, that they may be to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Uh-oh, so if the Levites can do the congregation services or duties, and they've got to be on pretty good, pretty good terms with the Tel tribes of Israel. So that's probably conversion rules that we read back in the, in verse six, chapter six or whatever, six something. And thou shalt give them unto the Levites and every man according to his service. And Moses took the wagons and the oxen and gave them unto the Levites. Two wagons and four oxen he gave unto the sons of Gershon according to their service. And four wagons and eight oxen he gave unto the sons of Merari according unto their service under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. And unto the sons of Koath he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonged unto them was that they should bear upon their shoulders. So it sucks to be a Co sons of Kohath. Twelve days of offerings. And the princes offered for dedicating of the altar in the day that it was anointed. Even the priests offered their offerings before the altar. And the Lord said unto Moses, They shall offer their offering, each prince on his day, for the declining of the altar. First day, the prince of Judah. And he that offered his offering the first day was Nishan, the son of Aminadab, of the tribe of Judah. And his, his offering was a silver charger. The weight of three thereof was an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels. After the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them were full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering. One, one spoon of ten shekels of gold, full of incense. One young bullock of, of one ram, one lamb of the first year, for a burnt offering one kid of the goats for a sin offering, for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the next year. That was the offering of Nashon, son of Aminadab. Okay, so we're going to skip over this. They're just literally saying what they sacrificed or, or contributed or, or what they, uh, what is this offered. 
So then we have the second day, the Prince of Ishakar, third day, Prince of Zebulon, fourth day, Prince of Reuben, sixth day, Prince of, or fifth day, Prince of Simeon, Prince of God, G-A-D, Gad, uh, Prince of Manasseh, eighth day, ninth day, the Prince of uh, Benjamin, Benjamin, tenth day, the Prince of Dan, big homie Dan, represent, it's my squad, dude made me laugh, I don't know why this is funny, eleventh day, the Prince of Asher, twelfth day, Prince of Naphtali, altar offerings given by the princes. So let's see if this is of any historical relevance or interest. The altar offerings given by the princes. This was the dedication of the altar in the day when it was anointed by the princes of Israel. Twelve charges of silver, twelve silver bulls, twelve spools of gold. No. So we're going to skip over that. Burnt offerings by the princes, all the oxen. Peace offerings by the princes and all the oxen, more oxen. God speaks to Moses. When Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, Again, meditation, realization, thinking, attributing realization to historical awareness. Then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat that was upon the Ark of the Testimony. Again, as a Catholic culture-raised person, not sure what a mercy seat is in a synagogue. don't even really know the internals of a synagogue. I'm imagining the tabernacle set is pretty similar. From between the two cherubims, and he spake unto him, Aaron, to light the lamps. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and say unto him, When thou lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick. And Aaron did so. so. He lighted the lamps thereof over against the candlestick, as the Lord commanded Moses. And this work of the candlestick was of beaten gold, unto the shaft thereof, unto the flowers thereof, was beaten work, according unto the pattern which the Lord had shewed Moses. So he made candlestick. He made the candlestick. Cleansing rituals for Levites. So... And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites from among the children of Israel and cleanse them. And thus shalt thou do unto them to cleanse them. Sprinkle water of purifying upon them, and let them shave all of their flesh. And let them wash their clothes, so make themselves clean. Seems like a reasonable biological thing. Just like shower, cut all of your hair off and let you shower. <laughs> take, let, then let them take a young bullock with his meat offering, even fine flour mingled with oil. And a young, another young bullock shalt thou take for a sin offering. And thou shalt bring the Levites before the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt gather the whole assembly of the children of Israel. And thou shalt bring the Levites before the Lord. And the children of Israel shall put their hands upon the Levites. And Aaron shall offer the Levites before the Lord for an offering of the children of Israel. And they may execute the service of the Lord. And the Levites shall lay their hands upon the heads of the bullocks. And thou shalt offer this, the offerings, offerings, offerings. So why would just why would why would the the Hebrews want the Levites to be able to do services? You know they're good friends of them, or they need employees. They need people to do the stuff. So, just so could either just be um, good cultural, the Levites and the Israelites being being friendly or on good terms, working with each other and allowing the Levites to convert or you know get a, get a, get a Hebrew passport so to speak, um, or it could be because they just need manpower. So again, I just don't know. The, the, the relevant populations of the, that time frame of other people, of the Jebusites. Again, big Jebusites probably still in the game. So, just, just don't know the overall population and considerations. But I'm guessing the Levites is either because they're that they've, they've culturally similar or they Hebrews need people. And they're, all, they're the most culturally similar or something. The Levites represent Israel's firstborn. Thus shalt thou separate the Levites from among the children of Israel. The Levites shall be mine. And after that, the Levites go in to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt cleanse them and offer for them for an offering. See, so again, even when it says that, right? And the Levites shall be mine. But the children of Israel are also supposed to be the Lord, right, guys? He freed you from, uh, he got you out of Egypt, so now you're, now you're mine. But now the Levites are mine. Separate them from the children of Israel. So it's got to be a different author or something. For they are wholly given unto me from among the children of Israel. Instead, such as op open every womb, and even instead of the firstborn of all the children of Israel, have I taken them unto me. For all the firstborn of the children of Israel are mine, both man and beast. On the day that I smote every firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. Yeah, okay. And I have taken the Levites for all the firstborn of the children of Israel. And I have given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and to his sons from among the children of Israel, to do service of the children of Israel in the tabernacle of the congregation. 
and to make atonement for the children of Israel, that there be no plague among the children of Israel, when the children of Israel come nigh unto the sanctuary. So are the Levites have any captivity? Are they under like control? Are they being controlled by the Israelites? Not exactly sure what it says. He gives, he gives the Israelites, or the Levites, to the Israelites. The Levites purified. And Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel did to the Levites according unto all that the Lord commanded Moses concerning the Levites. So did the children of Israel unto them. The Levites were purified, and they washed their clothes, and Aaron offered them as an offering before the Lord, and Aaron made an atonement for them to cleanse them. And after that went the Levites in to do their service in the tabernacle of the congregation before Aaron and before his sons. As the Lord had commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so did they unto, unto them. Age limit for service. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is it that belongeth unto the Levites. From twenty and five years old and upward, they shall go in and wait upon the service of the tabernacle of congregation. Twenty-five years, same exact for our house of representatives. And from the age of fifty years old, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof, and shall serve no more. Fifty. You can't do, you know, granted, I'm not sure, again, of all the sacrificing and all the rituals laid out, how actually physically bearing it is. But right, our, our military service goes from 18 to 60. And so they really have, you know, working years of 25 to 50, which is, which is interesting. And again, in the context of, you know, Ethiopia and plenty of people living to 120, all of the, mo all of the uh, Abraham, Sarah, all living over 100 years old. So how about our public servants doing our jobs? Oh gosh, oldest president in history or Congress people have got, I don't know, average age got to be over 65. So yeah, maybe we should actually, again, learn from something, again, as a historian. People, I'm just pointing out everyone's fucking hypocritical nonsense, no one reads anything. But shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of congregation to keep the charge and shall do no service. Thus shalt thou do unto the Levites, touching their charge. So how about, how about any, any rabbis or priests over the age of 50? When have you guys ever read this book with any sort of historical competence at all? The season for observing Passover. The Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt. Yeah, so this is only two years of the last time. Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. When I'm reading the laws, and it just, like, the, the, the guidelines of the law, it seems redundant. So it's like, I just think it's a couple writers from different tribes. Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. In the fourteenth day of this month, at even, yea, shall keep it in his appointed season, according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, shall ye keep, yea, keep it. But it said, it just Googled Passover this year, is like April. So it says, in the first month of the second year, Passover observed, and Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they shall keep the Passover, and they keep the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month at even in the wilderness of Sinai, according to the children, and according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So did the children of Israel. So that'd be January fourteenth. So why are we having Passover celebrations in April? Is someone a historian looking and doesn't seem to be too consistent? Unless I'm missing something. The defiled can't observe Passover later. <laughs> And there were certain men who were defiled by the body, by the dead body of man, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. So if you fucked a dead body, if you committed necrophilia, you're not holy enough to do Passover on the first day. But you're not too disgusting. You haven't been too defiled too much to not observe it on the on a little later date. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back? that we may not offer an offering to the, of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel. Were we not just because we fucked some dead bodies and we're not children of Israel anymore? Come on, Moses. And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. I will think, and come to a realization as your leader. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or any of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet shall not keep the Passover unto the Lord. And this strikes me as necro necrophilia, not murder. The fourteenth day of the second month at even shall ye keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it unto the morning, nor break any bone of it, according to the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey, and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people. 
because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season, that man shall bear his sin. So again, I'm almost certain it says, we are defiled by the body, the dead body of a man. That might just be murder. Like, I can't tell if this is necrophilia or murder. But it says, shall be unclean by the reason of a dead body. The, they, they, they explicitly said murder before. So this, this, I, I can't tell if this is murder or necrophilia. But regardless, if you don't do your offering, whether it's murder or necrophilia, you, if you do your offering, then you, then you can observe the Passover and you're still part of the, the group. If you don't do the offering unto the Lord, you get kicked out of the group. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you and will keep the Passover unto the Lord according to the ordinance of the Passover and according to the manner thereof, so shall he do. Ye shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land, the cloud by day, fire by night, Interesting, we have a semicolon indicating the ending of a theorem. And on the day of the ta that the tabernacle was reared up from the cloud, covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of testimony, and at even there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire until the morning. So it was always. The cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. The cloud leads Israel on their journey. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after, we went cloud nine, then after the cloud, the, the children of Israel journeyed, and in the place where the cloud abode, the children of Israel pitched their tents. At the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed, and at the commandment of the Lord they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord, and they journeyed not. And so it was, when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was, when the cloud abode from evening even unto morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed. Whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents, and journeyed not. But was but when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord, they rested in the tents, and at the commandment of the, the Lord, they journeyed. They kept in charge of the Lord at the commandment of the Lord by the hand of, of Moses. And so again, they've been out of Egypt for two years in the wilderness. Now they're journeying around. They did their sacrifices. They got their laws. That's the tabernacle, or Ten Commandments. And now what's going on? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make the two trumpets of silver of a whole piece shalt thou make them, that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. Well, the other thing that struck me from the clouds leads Israel on their journey. It's when it says whether it's a day, whether it's two days, or a month, or a year. Now, again, I'm not sure how much time is elapsing after the two, initial two years of getting ex exodus from Egypt. Various trumpet calls. And when they shall blow with them, and the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if they blow but with one trumpet... Then the princes, which are heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. When ye blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward. When ye blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, but ye shall not sound an alarm. So how do you just blow on a trumpet? Just dry, just a dry rub on the old trumpet? And the sons of Aaron, the priests shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance for every throughout your generations. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. So just warning calls. Trumpets blown for all feast days. Also in the days of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings, and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings that they may be to you for a memorial, sensorial, before your God. I am the Lord your God. I am Brad. <laughs> the journey from Sinai to Paran. And it came to pass on the twentieth day of the second month in the second year that the cloud was taken up off the tabernacle of testimony. So we got two years, two months, and twenty days. And now we're going to Paran. Drop a comment if you know geographically the distance from Sinai to Paran. The children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai, and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. 
And they first took their journey according to the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses, and the first place went the standard of the camp of the children of Judah according to their armies. And over his host was Nishan, the son of Aminadab. Aminadab. And over the host of the tribe of children of Issachar was Nathaniel, the son of Zuar. And over the host of the tribe of children of Zebulun was Elab, and the son of Helon. Lots of names, lots of names, skipping, 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 skipping. Moses' father-in-law. Jeth, Jethto's coming back? Jethro is his name? Moses' father-in-law? I thought we already, we already had Mo, we already met Moses' father-in-law. It wasn't Hobab. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Ragul, the, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law. What, what, it was like Jethro. It was like Jethro Tall or something. What's going on there? We are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do good of thee good. How is this Moses' father-in-law? Remember, Moses' father-in-law told Moses to stop hearing the complaints of the children of Israel one by one and to delegate it to lesser judges. That's literally what she told. So who's, who's Hobab? Who's Hobab? Joe Bob's? Who's Hobab? I know Jethro is Moses' father-in-law. What's going on here? For the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my own to my kindred. And he said, Leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. And it shall be, if thou go with us, yeah, it shall be that the goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will we will do unto thee. Moses' prayer to God. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in the three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp, and it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when it rested, and he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. And the people complained. Oh, we heard this again. Are you there yet, Moses? We're the promised land, brother. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Taborah, because the Lord of the fire burnt among them, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. The children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Garlic, onions, and fish actually does sound pretty good. Again, if I felt safe enough to generate an appetite, because I'm, I'm cast out from my species. I'm literally kicked out of society to the point where I don't be able, I'm not allowed to socialize so I can't eat properly. So all you fucking holy freaks and your little fucking weird robes watching me fucking read your dumb words you've never read, you were torturing me today. Dying filthy fucking shame. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. And the manna was coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of bedellium. So there were definitely some, at least pescatarians in Egypt. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills, and beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when they do fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Moses, Moses complains to God. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them, that thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom, as a nursing father beareth a, the sucking child, unto the land which thou swarest unto thy fa their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give unto all these people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh, that we may eat. And I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. Moses is like, you know, if you can't, if I can't feed my people, I don't see them all wither and die, kill me, so I don't have to see it. Elders are point, pointed to help Moses. The Lord said unto Moses, 
Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the, of the people, and officers over them. So like in our society, we have zero elders. We have a bunch of whores that are whores from 18 until they're dead. They go a whoring, and they just don't stop, and they don't see a problem with it. So we don't have a single elder in our society besides me, not one. And bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them. See, spirit, the spirit, awareness, leadership. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. Sharing leadership, that thou bear it not thyself alone, and say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh, for ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt, therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. So again, uh, I mean, obviously they're, they're eating rams and goats and, and pigs and stuff too, but... And these, the, the Hebrews definitely are definitely not vegetarian or vegans. Definitely not. They want their flesh to eat. They want meat and fish. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out of your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, for that ye have despised the Lord, which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why, come, why came we forth out of Egypt? Moses questions God. And Moses said, the people among whom I am are 600,000 footmen. So again, right around 600,000 people. So I think it's just the total census. And thou hast said, I will give them flesh, and they may eat a whole month. But the, the numbers we were just counting were just like a, a men of certain ages, between like, you know, well, sometimes it was, it was above the, the, the age of one and stuff. The, the census wasn't really clear as to who, who why we're counting in weird ways. Shall the flocks of the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. In my word, proven word. Right, you have the general and the personal. A single individual proving word, and the word persists throughout the species. So the word is the law. God's spirit, which we don't enforce to any capacity whatsoever at all. It's like literally illegal to enforce the law today. God's spirit rests on elders. And Moses, we had God's spirit, not God, the spirit of reason. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people, and set them round about the tabernacle. The Lord came down in a cloud, and he didn't come down, he came down in a cloud, his presence, awareness. Wherever two or more gathered, you're in the presence of, of knowledge, of if you say something stupid, somebody else will be like, that sounds stupid. And spake unto him, and took of the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders, and it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Prophesied, conjectured, reasoned, theoremed. They produced theorems. Prophecies or theorems. Conjectures, predictions. But there remained two of, of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went out, not out, unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. And they were of them that were written. So again, I think I mean, it's, I think it's literally writing stuff down of the prophecies of the conjectures. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophecy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them, censor them. And Moses said unto them, Envious thou for my sake, would God that all the that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. God sends quails. And there went forth the rally in the troops. And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth, does you need quantum mechanics for some cubits? And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails, and he gathered at least gathered ten homers. And they spread them all around the camp themselves, round about the camp. And God sends a plague on Israel. I thought quails would be food. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibroth Hatavah, 
because there they buried the people, the people that lusted, and have journeyed from Kibroth Hatava unto Hazaroth, and abode at Hazaroth. So yeah, we just uh, we just, we just murked a bunch of people, those who lusted, those that doubted and wanted, kept wanting, those that were gluttonous. Yeah, we just uh, we uh, we uh, we uh, buried those ones there. <laughs> God's anger toward Miriam and Aaron. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman who he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Ugh, Ethiopian making another appearance. So obviously Mir Miriam's going to be pretty upset the husband's over there clapping cheeks with uh, an Ethi Ethiopian. So maybe there's more than one father-in-law. Maybe he's not married, but again, I, there's Jethro that's supposed to be Moses' uh, father-in-law. Then we had another, like, Hobab, Hobab's. <laughs> and they said, Hath the Lord indeed spake, spoken only by Moses. Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? The word of reason? Can't, we can't speak reasonable things? We can't say things that make sense? Hath he not spoken alone by us? And the Lord heard it? It is what it is? Reason? Now the man Moses was very meek, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Meek, I'm assuming, is humble here? And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out, yea, three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the th they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud, presence and reason, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, in personal awareness, in personal realization, that light bulb moment. I will make myself aware to him. Just people talking about realization and leadership and how to run, run, run rituals. I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently. So the words of Moses, Moses is the most learned, meek, humble, intelligent person of the group or something. Remember, Moses was supposed to be slow spoken, and Aaron was supposed to be the good speaker. So again, Moses is just the leader, Aaron's the speaker, speak mouth to mouth. Sounds kind of, sounds like French kissing. <laughs> sounds like pretty weird stuff, Lord. Even apparently, and not in dark speeches. No, it's exaggeration. You guys, you guys can realize things and learn stuff, but I speak to Moses directly. Just exaggeration. Um, in the similitude of the Lord, he, he behold, wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. The cloud departed off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's wombs. Moses pleads for Miriam's healing. So he married an Ethiopian. But now he still, he, still, he still feels for Miriam and wants her to not have the leprosy. And in false association, obviously. obviously, You, you sin, you, you do something wrong and they get a disease. It's like, oh my gosh. All the vaccines, the vaccines are causing heart attacks. No, it's just false association. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. The Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp for seven days, and the people journeyed, not till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward the people were removed from Hazaroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. So we're in Paran now, still in the wilderness. Miriam had a quick little illness. So I don't, does, is, is leprosy that severe to this disease? They just need to socially isolate for seven days and they're all good to go in ancient times? Not sure. So I'm actually going to cut this episode here of our read aloud of Ye Holy Bible at uh, Numbers 13, 1. We're going to be 12 men chosen as spies in the next episode. I'd like to keep these around an hour just for <laughs> rendering purposes and just, I don't know, see book club goes for an hour. I don't know, it seems about the length it should be. So we're making our way through, again, skipping over anything that's just list of formality or just list of names that isn't any historical or culturally interesting to me at all. But again, I definitely see some redundancy, not exactly sure who's the writer. It could be a single person or m multiple people, but with only being two and a half years outside of Egypt, and then that, that just, I just, there just seems some redundancy in the writing of, of just like the, the, the laws or the implementation. 
the numbers, counting a bunch of people, um, just let seeing who's all still in the camp. But that's pretty much what we covered today. Nothing super unique. Contribute what I could, um, but just a history book of family stories. And then a bunch of people try to try to interpret stuff they haven't read, and then just blurt out not, not nonsense. So, but I did want to say I've not seen. Obviously, they say you should. Uh, you sleep. Homosexuality is an abomination. Should be put to death. But again, like I said, if you cheat on this person, you cheat on that person, you should be put to death. I didn't say, I didn't say anything about marriage yet. So, obviously, the, the homosexuality is an abomination, along with other, a bunch of other people you could sleep with is an abomination. In a heterosexual relationship, but I've not seen any relationship of, you know, the actual formality of the ritual of marriage. So, let's kind of so premonition see where that comes in to say that, that actual marriage, when, when's the structure of marriage come into the Bible? I don't, I don't know exactly. Probably pretty soon. So we'll find out on the next episode of The Real BBC. See you next time.